from uh,
Welcome to the November 19th uh, meeting of the Goffstown Budget Committee. I'll start off with a roll call. Uh, Skyler? Yes, present and alone. Bill Cordes? Present and not alone. Thank you. Greg? I am here and alone. Joe? Present and alone. Eileen is not here. Jeff O'Brien? Present and alone. Fred Flay is not here. Dennis Lynch is not here. I am here by myself. Spencer Diaz is not here. Richard Manso? Present and alone. Thank you. Richard Fletcher? Present and not alone. Jared? Present and not alone. Select Lemay. Present and alone. Terrific. Uh, thank you. Tonight, uh, Scott, do you want to read our notice first? Sorry. Yeah, sure. Um, consistent with Governor Sununu's executive order 2020-04, emergency order number 12, the budget committee of the town of Goffstown, uh, members will be attending via meeting, by a remote meeting. The public can access this remote meeting by either viewing it via the live stream link on Goffstown Television or by calling into a telephone conference bridge line at area code 603-766-5646 and then entering participant code 685562. If you wish to make a public comment at the beginning of the meeting, please wait for the chair's instructions and then press star nine and your microphone will be unmuted. And then you'll be directed to state your name and address prior to making a public comment. And for what it's worth, uh, there is no one on the public comment line right now. Great, thank you. Uh, so tonight for business, we have to move uh, the budget to the public here. We also need to uh, and take up any final discussions there. Um, and then also discuss the capital reserve fund uh, from the school board and then take a vote tentatively to also move that uh, to a public hearing. I believe I believe that's all we'll need tonight, Scott. Or yeah, that, that's my understanding as well. Great. Uh, do you have a preference on which, what we take up first? I would just assume I have the CRF um, queued up right now, so I would probably Great. do that one if that's okay. Yep. Let's go for it. All right, let me share my screen. Um, so to help our note taker, uh, this is Scott Gross. I'm the business administrator for SAU 19. Um, on your screen here is uh, pretty much uh, a history of the capital reserve fund. Uh, some of you were on the budget committee when this was initiated. Um, but I, what I wanted to share with you is you know, kind of like where, uh, where we're at. So in uh, July 1st of, two, of 2019, we deposited that initial $200,000. Um, during the course of the year, um, we, uh, there was a couple of things that were done. Uh, there were some gutters that were replaced, uh, but most notable, you'll remember that we did the gym lockers at Mountain View, the partition walls at Mountain View, as well as the bleachers at Goffstown High School inside the gym for a little over 103,000. That left a balance um, of about 93,000 in change. And then on July 1st of this year, another $200,000 was uh, deposited into the capital reserve fund. Um, between the inception of the capital reserve fund and November 1st, uh, that fund garnered an investment income of a little, of almost $5,000. So um, as of last week, and I presented this to the school board. So when, at their meeting, uh, the balance in the fund at the time was uh, $298,000 and change. Um, the school board had committed to replacing the rear stairs of Goffstown High School, and that project has been done. And that was uh, 40,756. Um, about a month or so ago, the school board um, also approved a lighting retrofit project. And I'll just give you a little bit of a, a rationale behind that. So in the, the town of New Boston, I'm the BA for that school district as well. Um, there were tremendous ener ever source incentives on uh, on energy and lighting retrofit projects, um, and I asked the um, the company to take a look at Goffstown Schools. And essentially, we are getting a seventy percent incentive to replace the gym lighting in all of our buildings, as well as the cafeterias. So, um, 
So with that, we're getting about a $50,000 lighting retrofit uh, package. And the cost of the district is a little over, a little under 17,000. Um, the uh, expected savings in energy uh, is tremendous. It's almost $10,000 a year uh, in reduced electrical costs. And our payback is about 1.75 years. So um, we'll pay that $16,800, 870, take about two years to pay that back. And then after that, we should see about a $10,000 decrease in our electric bill and, and the bulbs that we use going forward. So uh, uh, Mark, you'll recall, I'm not to put you on the spot, but the town of Goffstown did the same thing. Correct. It was Adam Jacobs did that with DPW on the yep. LED lights. Mm -hmm. um, same type of thing. I think the payback on that one was like three years. Correct. Uh, yeah, so, it was three, um, three or three and a half years. I yeah. do remember. So, um, so that was the, that was the situation there. I just wanted to uh, do that. I just want to let, let the minute taker know that I'm admitting Fred Plett into the meeting right now and it's 7.08 p.m. Uh, so with that said, on uh, again, I'm, I'm, I'm talking about the committed thing. So after those commitments are done, that capital reserve fund will be down to about $240,000. Um, the board uh, at their last meeting um, voted to uh, proceed with uh, RFPs on three projects. One of them is the Mountain View Middle School uh, cistern. And, and what we have there is we have a, a leaky type system. So that there is a tank that is at Mountain View for fire suppression and that, that, that tank is having issues and we're gonna have to empty the tank. And then they have to gonna, I think the process is they have to empty it and then kind of like re, recode it, I guess on the inside. Um, so that's one of that projects. And then for both Maple and Bartlett, we're gonna be replacing the heating control system. So again, to make the building more energy efficient. Um, so uh, those, those heating controls uh, will help in that regard. And we anticipate that that will be about a $245,000 project. It could be more, it could be less, but that's kind of where we've, where, where we've kind of earmarked it for on our CIP. So um, I, at the end of the day, right here, we, we've spent about $164,000 uh, in terms of what's been committed to date. And we're look, what we're doing with this CRF is we're really looking at mostly um, uh, projects that involve capital improvement plan. And that's why you're seeing the cistern and the two heating controls projects. So um, our desire from a school board, a school district perspective is to uh, place another $200,000 into the capital reserve fund. And um, I did include in your packet initially uh, the CIP plan, and there's uh, gotta be at least three, $4 million worth of projects that are in there. Um, and we use that as our, um, you know, our guidance in terms of our planning document of how we're gonna use monies from the, uh, from the CRF. So it's been a great, great tool for the district. And uh, I know that the, 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 the budget committee was, was great about, you know, kind of pushing the school district in the right direction about really capitalizing, um, you know, on getting a CIP plan together. And it's worked out super well over the last, you know, two years. I know Jared has been instrumental in that uh, as well. So I'll leave it at that. I'll, I'll stop sharing my screen, but I wanted to at least show you the history of where the money has gone and where it's going to be going. This Great. is Fred Platt. I was five or six minutes late because I got off a Lion Sight and Hearing Foundation of New Hampshire Inc. call where I was treasurer and presented the bylaw change. So my apologies, but I'm here now. And I heard the hey. gist of Thanks for joining, Fred. Huh? <laughs> Thanks for joining. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Scott, just for new members, I uh, there are parameters around the capital reserve fund. Can you just go over that quickly? Yeah, so this particular capital reserve fund was established a couple of years ago and the parameters are essentially, we can only spend that monies from that fund for existing capital assets. So it does not allow us to do anything new. So let's say for an example that we wanted to put an addition on one of the schools this particular capital reserve fund would not allow us to do that. However, if we had to replace a roof, a boiler, uh, replace a sidewalk or uh, guardrails or, or a septic system that we could use those funds for that lighting, another, another one, floor tiles, et cetera, but we can't do it 
for anything that would be new type of construction. So if we were to, if the school district were down the road, uh, as you know, we purchased a piece of property. If we were looking to build a school, we could not use those funds for that purpose at all. Great, oh, and I'll open it up. Yep. Question for Scott. On the cistern, Scott, that you currently have inside of the block building. Yeah. Is there a contingency plan in place if that tank is rotted beyond repair? What what do you plan to do if that tank is unrepairable and we can't coat it? We, I, I think it has already been inspected and 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 it, and the coat. I, I think that's it. Already has been determined that it is repairable. Okay. Um, no, I just that I just yeah. wanted to find out. Um, nope. I guess if it wasn't, then we would have to replace it. You know. Yeah. Um, no, that's fine. Yeah. That's then, a cement tank, right, Scott? Um, I don't, I think it's a metal. I, I, I don't, I, I don't think it's, I don't think it's cement. I've only been in that building once. Um, but, uh, I, I don't think that it's cement. I'm not positive. You, do you know, Rick, Dick, you were around at that time in terms of when it was built. I'm Scott, this is Mark. I'm pretty yeah. sure it's a metal. It's yeah. a metal riveted tank or yeah, seam, right. seam tank put together. Yeah, that's that's my understanding. Yeah, I just I just didn't want to throw money at that if if it were only going to last like we'll say a quick fix. You yeah. know, would it would it behoove us to once it's empty to look at it and if it's maybe worth putting a new one, do a new one. It's just my two cents for that. Yep. What I know of it. Thank you. All set, Cole. Great. Further questions here. Yep, Fred. Yeah, I also have my hand raised with a participant's thing if you're watching that. My concern, I've been, not been on the Capital Improvement Committee for several years now, partially because I worked in Boston for 10 years, and it conflicts with the Lion's Sight and Hearing that I was on tonight. Uh, but when the school proposed a Capital Improvement in the past, they just tried to make it general like this, and it got rejected because it was supposed to be towards a specific project. This is not towards a specific project. It's just $200,000 and we'll spend it any way we want. And I have a problem with that. So I'm gonna to move to uh, reject the capital improvements, improvement and see if it flies. Um, can I respond? Sure. Well, I'll first, I'll actually first second that and then you can respond. All right. Um, so as you are well aware, the capital that the voters approved the capital reserve fund um, for the school district with the notion that um, it is for uh, the maintenance or of existing capital assets. So it's something that, uh, and not only did the voters approve it, but for two consecutive years, they've uh, put, put $200,000 uh, into the fund. Uh, so I, I, I have to respect individual members decision if they decide that they would vote against a deposit of two hundred thousand um, dollars. The you, you should be aware though that um, there is no uh, many many communities have capital reserve funds that are not specific in nature in terms of. And I will give you uh, one such uh, community as Goffstown. Um, we have a fire apparatus uh, fund, and we have many different apparatus. I mean, we have you know tower trucks and and rescue trucks and engines, et cetera. Um, it's not like we have to say that it's gonna be a for, for a specific vehicle, but it's for fire apparatus. In this case, it's to maintain existing school buildings. Um, and you know what, what I wanted to do for you, Fred and, and, and Joe, is that um, there's complete transparency in terms of what projects um, that the school is looking to, to, to use that fund for um, and I'll show you on my screen um, the CIP uh, matrix, and I'll try to. I, this is a tough one because it's. Um, I'm gonna try to make it as. Well, that's clearly visible, Scott. Okay, so <laughs> it, I'm gonna try to make it a little. I don't know why I can't make it larger, but okay. Um, so as you can see, for Bartlett School, heating controls. That's part of a part of the plan. Window replacement, roof sections. Uh, we have some IT in there. Uh, talking about bathroom renovations uh, at Bar at Maple, same thing, sections of roof. So we use this as a planning tool. Um, and uh, for all of this, you know, we have the cistern tank. That's, you know, one of the ones that we didn't do last year that we're looking to do uh, this year. So 
you know, for us, it's just been a very uh, powerful tool for us because we know that we've got a lot of different projects uh, going on. And what I wanted to do is to get to the bottom uh, of this uh, to give you the kind of the totals. And, you know, what you'll see here, when you look at the subtotals for school projects, uh, 260,000 in one year, 960,000, 993, 1.1 million, almost 2 million in this year. And then the final year of the six years, 1.5. Five. So we've got a ton of projects that we're doing. And this, I think, is just a very sound means to uh, plan for and pay for some of these uh, expenses rather than having to do it as individual warrant articles uh, every year. So I just wanted to let the board, uh, the committee know that. Thank you, Scott. Paul, do you mind if I say something? Yep, go. Thank you. Um, I appreciate Scott, you explaining it a little bit. I guess um, the thing that I've had a problem with for multiple years now is that CIP is already by itself an inherent, uh, like a transparent process. So by putting it through the CIP process, the voters can tune into the meetings and um, be aware of what's coming up next year. Um, so this transparency was already there without the um, CRF um, and it already maintains the item. So it's, it is used as a planning tool. Um, I guess what, why we initially initially approved the CRF was for a, similar to the fire apparatus in a sense of like, it wasn't going to be immediately used each year. It was gonna be kind of a bank account for when the more expensive things were, um, were needed to spend on. So like you, keep, you kept citing the boiler or the, um, like the leach field at middle school, things like that. So we kept citing those projects as being these things and we're saving up money, but, but we're spending it all too. So it's just another way for the school board to spend money um, that we don't need to. Um, and oh, actually, may, may there say, is a, yeah. hold on. There is also an emergency fund. Hmm. Thank you. Thank you. There's also a, um, I believe it's 1.5% emergency fund that we could use to fund these things with the approval of the budget committee and the commissioner of education. So as an emergency tool, we already have like a certain amount of budget that's in place for that. Um, and the CRF is not being used to save up or, um, you know, for the more expensive items, it's just being used to tack off a couple extra things on CIP when CIP is already a transparent tool that we use in the process. So that's why I would just argue that we should vote no on this or yes on Fred's motion, but no on the CRF. I, I, I guess the only thing that I would take exception to what you say, stated, and I apologize um, for uh, interrupting was um, things that the school board doesn't need to spend money on. I, and I have to respectfully disagree with you there because, you know, uh, there, I don't think there's anything on this CIP that, that is, you know, not exactly necessary replacing, you know, windows or replacing heating controls, uh, lighting, uh, roof sections. I mean, these are all things that are inherent to, um, you know, making sure that your buildings are safe and well-maintained the, the better that you maintain your, your buildings or, in, 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 or, or vehicles for that matter, um, the longer in th that investment lasts for you. So I, I think, again, um, and, and I, I would hope our school board rep would also chime in. I think that this is something that has been um, a mechanism for, for the school district to, uh, to handle some of these larger ticket items. I, I would agree with you, Joe, um, wholeheartedly in the sense that um, in a perfect world, you know, 200,000 is not a ton of money considering the fact that we've got what, $5 million, you know, on the horizon. Um, that, that being, the, you know, the case, um, you know, I would argue that, um, you know, we could, we, you know, maybe we should be funding this a, a bit more aggressively, but based upon the conditions right now, you know, putting a half a million dollars into a, into a CRF so that you could, you know, uh, at one point, you know, do an entire roof, et cetera. It's just not in the cards, you know, this particular year. So the school board has over the last two years and this year's as well has just put in a, a smaller amount of money. And I'll defer to the school board rep. Um, and I just rephrase, I didn't mean to say that the school board didn't, like it wasn't something needed. I guess what I'm saying is that the way we spend it could be through the CIP process and not even through the CRF. And I thought originally when I first voted for the CRF the first year, 
Um, I thought it would be a funding mechanism um, that we would save money just in case emergencies so we didn't have to tap that contingency 3.5% or whatever the budget, we would have extra money to spend um, in emergency situations. But um, I see this as being just an extra fund that the school board can use that isn't necessarily earmarked from year to year and they can just kind of pick and choose the projects they want to spend the money on that year. And it's just an extra fund. And I don't think we need this particular fund when we can fund it all through CRF or through the uh, CIP process. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, Richard Fletcher. Yep. So, so I'm going to go back two years ago when the budget committee voted these funds for the purpose that Scott has explained. That money, they spent it for the things they needed to fix that weren't getting fixed. So I, I think that the budget committee changes and things change with it. And we should recognize that what they've done so far with the money is things that had to be done and, and they're getting done faster than what they would be if we went to CIP and all the other items that needed to be taken care of. So I think they spent the money pretty, pretty uh, cautiously and done the things that needed to be done, and they're still planning to do that. So I hope you will, you'll keep that fund for that purpose. Cole, this is Greg. Can I ask a question, please? Yep. Go, Gert. Uh, yeah, I'm relatively new to this. Could maybe Scott? Could you? What is the? Could you use the tank as an example? Um, you know, what's the cost of the tank, and if it's not paid for out of um, the fund that we're talking about, how does it get paid for? What's the mechanism for that? I, when I know you're, you're mentioning CIP, but maybe I need to be educated quickly here, if you could. Um, yes. How does something like that get paid for if it's not getting done by this fund? All right, so I have to backtrack a little bit. So we have a capital improvements process and the town and the school both use that. It's a requirement to have a CIP plan in order to have any type of capital reserve funds. So when you have, when you go through the CIP process, it's a planning tool, meaning that we plan six years out as to what are the capital expenditures that the town and school are going to have. Um, and, and the purpose of it is to try to level things out, level things out uh, so that, you know, you don't have $5 million of capital needs in one year, 1 million in another, 10 in another. So you try to, they spend a ton of time trying to level, level things out on, on the town side, for an example, you know, we know that we have to get like three or four police cruiser replacements every year. So rather than replacing, you know, six in one year, one in another, they, they spread it out. Um, but in terms of how you fund the CIP, funding of the CIP plan um, is done by uh, three mechanisms, all right? The first is you can put these types of things in your operating budget. So we could put um, the... Uh, these projects in the budget, and then the budget committee can determine whether or not they're going to cut that from the budget or to leave it in. The voters also can determine whether they're going to approve the budget or not approve the budget. So that's one way of funding, let's just say that fire cistern. The second way of funding this, the, the, a fire cistern is to create a separate warrant article, and you're letting the voters determine, um, you know, to raise and appropriate X amount of dollars for the replacement of a fire cistern. One of the downsides to that is that if the voters voted no on that fire cistern, and then all of a sudden the fire cistern fails, the law in New Hampshire is no means no, meaning that if, 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 it, if it failed, we can't then use operating budget money to then fix the fire cistern. And it's, that's the most dangerous of all things in terms of New Hampshire uh, law is that you know, no means no. Um, a better example would be that we wanted to, uh, let's say spend $100,000 to improve the library at, in, this, in one of the schools and the voters rejected that warrant article. And then the school board said, fine, we're just gonna do it out of our operating budget. Um, that's these are the types of things where the courts have said, no, you can't do that. So when you reject a warrant article, the danger of putting it as a separate warrant article is if it fails, um, you are in rough shape. The third way of funding is through capital reserve funds. 
So you're setting aside monies in a capital reserve fund um, and the board, whether it be the select board or the school board then can uh, expend from those capital reserve funds for these types of expenditures. And um, the, both the select board and now the school board have been <clears throat> using CIP as a transparent process to put everything that they, that they believe is needed for the town and the school in the plan um, and rarely does something pop up where it's like, hey, something, you know, where we're going to spend it on uh, uh, capital reserve fund money on something that wasn't talked about previously. It's, it's just rare. Um, so those are the three ways, Greg, in which um, the school and the town can spend for items on CIP. And I hope that helps. Thank you very much. Mr. Chair, this is Jared. If I may go. Yep. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, the, you know, I've, I've been part of the school board for two years and I've been the uh, rep from the school board to the budget committee. This is my second year. And I would agree with Joe on some things that he said that, you know, we don't want to use all the money. And I agree with that. We don't want to use all the money. We want to be able to roll over some money for those big ticket items like the roof or the septic system. And we try to do that. However, there becomes there comes a time where there are priorities that we need to focus on within the CIP. Unfortunately, this year was one of those years where we had to focus on those three items, which really did eat a majority of our money um, that we're not able to roll over for, for the next coming year. The school board also tries to be very conscious and cognizant of the tax rate and the tax burden this puts on people. We've tried to level fund this at $200,000 for the past couple of years. As Scott showed you, what's been approved by the CIP, which is the planning committee, is close to $1 million a year that we would need for CIP capital improvement in our school system. So we are just working a fifth of that right now. But that causes us to prioritize, and that causes us to delay some items. Um, and, and I would agree that, yes, we should try to leave as much money as we can there so that we can do a septic. Because if the septic goes and we don't, you know, we did put the money in place to actually do the septic, if the septic goes or the roof goes, that's now reactionary versus looking forward to what we should be trying to be proactive on and replacing. Um, so I do appreciate this budget committee just like I've appreciated the past two budget committees, who really dictated to us, hey, we want to level fund the account. We want to know what we're actually spending it on, which is our CIP, CIP items, and to ensure that there's transparency on that so that we're not holding on to an unreserved fund balance. That's the important thing that I know that I'm trying to do as a representative. I do not want to use an unreserved fund balance to fund items that doesn't come through this board or does not go through CIP. And this has worked for the past two years, and I think it's something that's worth considering as we move forward. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Further discussion? All right. Uh, personally, um, I think it's been a useful tool to be able to put money away uh, for the future, looking at the final cost for CIP years out uh, and looking at those projects. I think this is a way for us to put some money aside to in the future, not have to uh, either, either there would be a spike in the tax rate or there would be a detrimental effect to the schools by not doing some of these projects. Uh, I think that this is a tool to kind of get us through uh, the middle road there and uh, serve the taxpayers and the students as best as we can. Um, Mr. Chairman, I'll make a motion that we approve I, the amount of money that Scott is uh, requesting. So the there's a motion, a motion from Fred, which I would like Fred to restate because I think you said except the CIP and I think you meant the capital reserve fund. Right. Yes. To reject the two hundred thousand dollar request for a CI school for the, request for CIP because it was not specific to a purpose, and so, that motion on the floor and seconded. 
So, so I, I believe the motion would be um, to not approve the money for the capital reserve fund, the $200,000. Same word, different wording, same, uh, same result. Okay. Uh, so the motion is on the floor to not, uh, not, not put the CRF to a public hearing. Would that correct? All right. Uh, so I'll call the roll. Uh, Skyler? No. Bill Cordes? Yes. Greg Flegel? No. Joe? Yes. Alina's not here. Jeff O'Brien? No. Fred? Yes. Dennis is not here. Uh, I vote no. Spencer is not here. Richard Manzo? Yes. Richard Fletcher? Mr. Chairman, I'm a little confused at what we're voting on. We're uh, voting we're voting to not go forward with the capital reserve fund. So if you would like to not go forward with the capital reserve fund, you would vote yes. If you would like to go forward with the capital reserve fund, you would vote no. No. Thank you. Jared? No. Selectman LeMay? No. So the vote is four yes, seven no. So the motion is defeated. Richard, did you have a separate motion that you'd like to bring forward now? Richard Fletcher. If you will, I'll make the motion, Richard, if you want to second it. This is Jared. I'd like to make a motion to fund the capital reserve fund by $200,000. And Scott, Second. the exact Second. that can be shared. No, I think I think what you said would be would be sufficient. Um, it would be um, to um, bring forward the capital reserve fund funded at two hundred thousand dollars, as uh, recommended by the school board, to be put forward to public hearing. Tim Richard, do you second that? Second it. All right. Further discussion. All right, hearing none, I'll call the roll. Skyler? Yes. Bill Cordes? Yes. Greg Flegel? Yes. Joe? No. Eileen is not here. Jeff O'Brien? Yes. Fred Plett? No. Dennis is not here. I vote yes. Center is not here. Richard Manso? No. Richard Fletcher? Yes. Jared Talbot? Yes. Select Ben LeMay? Yes. All right. So the motion, uh, motion is approved eight to three. I'd like to uh, restrict reconsideration on this item. I'll second that. Mark LeMay? Further discussion. So just, there? just, yeah, just for the record, restricting reconsideration does not include conversation at the public hearing um, or delivery session. Correct. Correct. Okay. Yep. Just for this evening. All right. Uh, for folks who are new to the committee, this just prevents it from coming to another vote. Uh, all right. Any further questions? No. I'll call the roll. Skyler? Yes. Bill Cordes? Yes. Greg Flegel? Yes. Joe? No. Jeff? Yes. Fred? No. It's not here. Uh, I vote yes. Spencer's not here. Richard Banzo? Yeah, I'll, I'll um, use this as an opportunity to make a point of order. Uh, 
we've adopted Robert's rules as our parliamentary authority, and there is no motion to restrict reconsideration in Robert's rules. Mm. All right, I'm well, going. Oh, you actually stated at the beginning of our first call when you were elected board. I'm sorry, what was that? This is Jared. I don't believe Cole actually stated that I would be using Robert's rule at our first meeting when he was elected chair of this board or any further conversation since. Those are rules of order that we voted on um, and we vote on them at the beginning of every new committee. Um, they're publicly available on the website. The Goffstown website, that is. Meeting minutes actually associated that then. All right. I'm going to Finish up the vote here, uh, Richard. If you'd like to challenge that, uh, that's fine. No, I'll just vote no. All right, thank you, Richard Fletcher. Yes. Jared. Yes. Selectman Lemay. Yes. All right. Uh, that is eight to three. All right. Uh, and then we have the school budget. Uh, the, if there's any further questions that folks have there, uh, for folks who weren't at our last meeting, there were no changes to what was proposed by the school board. Um, so right now we're looking at mainly a $20,000 cut uh, to the sub salaries line and then some eliminations of $1 lines. Um, and that's all that's all I'm tracking. Is that correct, Scott? That's, that's my understanding as well. It was a uh, twenty thousand three dollars. Um who wasn't here? Joe, I know you weren't here last meeting, Skylar. I'm not sure if there's anything else in the budget that you'd like to bring up or any other member, if there's something you'd like to go back to. This is the opportunity Cole, to do Cole, so. This is Scott, Cole, this is Skyler. Did you go over the food service budget? The, the, the Was that at the end of yesterday's, I mean, last week's session? I don't think. Or was that part of it? Or? I actually don't think we've gone over that. Is oh. that correct, Scott? We, we did not. I mean, I did share that with you. Um, I can, I'll bring that up for you now on my screen. Um, but Scott, so that's a self-sustaining budget, right? It is. This is Joe. Yes, okay. it is. So, um, all right. So basically what, what that means is um, self-sustaining, for those of you who have not been part of the budget committee, means that the revenues that food service takes in pays for the expenses. Um, yes, there have been exceptions last year, notably where because of COVID-19, uh, the school board had to kind of subsidize that and almost every district had to. The same thing is going to happen this year. But for the most part, it is it is self funding where the the uh, food service sales cover the cover the expenses. Thanks, Scott. All right, do you want me to bring it up, or are you good? I, I can do whatever you'd like in that respect. I can bring it up in the. No, I'm good. I, I have a copy, so I'm good. Okay. I'm okay. I've got a copy, a hard copy. Okay. Thank you. All right, still outstanding if there's anything else in the budget that folks would like to uh, bring up or general discussion around the budget as well. I, I mean, I think it's, I mean, we, I, I guess I just wanna kind of voice my concern with us not meeting in person because I think we could have had a better job of like having good conversations about um, other stuff in the budget. I feel like a lot of this process um, was rushed because it was over Zoom and, you know, nobody wants to be on a Zoom call. So I guess, unfortunately, like, I'm not happy with the way the budget looks, but um, a lot of this is, you know, we can't have those tough conversations in person. That's all I'm going to say about that. Yeah. All right. If there's no further discussion, uh, now would be the time for a motion. I'm not sure if we have a dollar if there's a dollar figure. There uh, is, then, uh, there, there is. Um, I'd prefer to bring it up on the screen so every, and maybe to do a recap so that everybody can see it so that it's terrific. as transparent as possible. Um, 
And I'm going to try to enlarge this a bit if I can. There we go. Um, so this is what I handed out to you folks uh, earlier. Uh, and I, I created a new tab here. This will be a budget committee tab. But uh, this was our budget uh, that we're currently in. Um, this 45 million, uh, 384, 100 is the default budget. Um, and then what I did here was now the proposed budget, um, because of the, the cuts that were made, will now go to 45 million, 494, 111. Um, so if there was to be a motion to proceed with a public hearing, um, it would be for this amount right here, because you, you must include um, the food service and the special revenue budget uh, as part of the total appropriation. So it would be uh, 47 million, 743,102 would be the uh, amount to bring forward to the public hearing. Mr. Chair, this is Jared. I'd like to make a motion to move forward with a proposed budget with a total appropriation of $47,743,102 to public hearing. Is there a second? I'll second. All right, motion from Jared, second by Richard Fletcher. Further discussion? Yeah, I'm going to take this off the screen so it's easier for the minute taker. All right. Hearing none, I'll call the roll. Skyler? Yes. Bill Cordes? Yes. Greg Flegel? Yes. Joe? Yes. Eileen? Oh, sorry, not here. Jeff? Yes. Fred Plett? Yes. Lunch is in here. I vote yes. Spencer is in here. Richard Manzo? Yes. Richard Fletcher? Yes. Jared Talbot? Yes. And Selectman LeMay? Yes. All right, very unanimous, thank you. Um, Mr. Chair, this is Jared. I'd like to restrict reconsideration of the proposed budget that has been forwarded to public hearing. I'm not gonna take that motion up uh, this time, but I do believe this is our last point of business uh, this evening, besides just talking about our schedule going forward here. Uh, so I don't think it will be necessary to do that as well. Mr. Chair, I'm just worried that if we continue on, that we might bring about this budget later on during other sessions that we might be meeting before public session. Okay. I mean, it looks like it looks like you have eight votes automatically for the budget, right. so I wouldn't say that it it even is necessary at this point. I mean, I'm not going to lie to you; I don't have votes to change things, so. Well, Joe, I, I appreciate it, but we all know that opinions can change over time. I, I think, uh, Mr. Chair, if I may, I think yes. um, it's not, so, I, I believe uh, Mr. Talbot is saying that it's not, he's, he's not that he doesn't have any confidence that, that it's not going to be brought up tonight, but you are having other on meetings the on the town side. And that, I think that is what his concern would be. Yeah. Is there a second on Jared's motion? This is Greg, I'll second. Great, thank you, Greg. Further discussion? Yeah, All right. Chair. this is Richard Mando. Yeah, Richard. Um, I, 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 I think, um, you know, Jared mentions that opinions may change, and that's entirely true. Opinions may change, um, and there, there's no reason to limit ourselves just because change, uh, um, you know, maybe the budget should have been better if he thinks that our opinions would change uh, from approving it to disapproving it. Scott, for just a refresher, after, uh, after today, what's the process? Uh, so I, I don't want to step on Selectman LeMay's toes in terms of the town side, but it's my understanding that you still have deliberations on the town's budget 
And you would continue to do that on Tuesdays, if I'm not mistaken. So the budget committee will meet on Tuesdays, I believe through the first week of December. Right. Um, then from there, um, a public hearing, I don't have the definitive date. I can check on my, on my computer, but um, I believe it's like the first week of January is when there is a budget committee public hearing on the budget, all right? Um, for the both the town and the school. Um, and that's where the budget committee uh, takes input from the community. Um, and then from there, um, it goes to, to deliberative session. I spoke with um, Derek Horn, uh, was it yesterday or the day before? And I was trying to look it up. He didn't, he, he said he was gonna send me something um, and I didn't get it yet. But I believe that the legislature and maybe Fred and, and Joe or, or call, maybe you were around at the time when this was done, but due to COVID-19, um, Derek said that um, towns, the municipalities and school districts have an option whether or not to conduct a deliberative session um, based upon COVID. Um, and I didn't, I don't know the specifics. So I can't say for certainty that there will be a town or school deliberative session uh, based upon the logistics of it. Um, but I just wanted that to, to be known. I don't want there to, and so the school board um, doesn't know this yet. Uh, so Jared, you're hearing this for the first time, but because uh, Derek just explained it to us uh, the other day, but at some point, if that is the case, um, then uh, the school board would more than likely hold uh, uh, at least one or two public hearings on their budget to get input from, from the community. And I, they always have public comment anyway, but it's an unusual set of circumstances with, with COVID. And uh, Joe, you were shaking your head. So if you know anything about this, I'd love to know because I don't have the information on it. Um, I just know a little bit, this is Joe, I just know a little bit based on even the governor's guidance on the, um, the mask order um, today. There's like a couple exceptions and there's some in cases of like political or like meetings or political speech or something. So I believe that, um, don't quote me, but I think that there are provisions in the orders to be able to meet in person, provided social distancing guidelines and things are in place. Yeah. This is the first I've heard about any question to deliver to a session. I kind of brought up the question because normally uh, the budget committee would have a chance to review the budget and make a final determination uh, after that meeting if after hearing public comment and whatnot, um, there was any chance to, there was any reason to change, uh, right. change values in the budget. Uh, so this motion, just to clarify, Cole, I'm sorry, this motion would not restrict us from making a final recommendation on the budget after the public hearing, or would that it be the case? Not. It would not. Okay. Great. All right. Thank you for that clarification, Scott. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> for the discussion, motion on the floor is to restrict reconsideration. All right, and I'll call the roll. Skyler? Yes. Bill Cordes? Yes. Greg Flegel? Yes. Joe? No. Jeff O'Brien? Yes. Fred Platt? No. I vote yes. Richard Manzo? No. Richard Fletcher? Yes. Jared Talbot? Yes. Selectman LeMay? Yes. Thank you. Um, all right. So we are set on school side uh, until uh, public hearing. Um, and I, and the, the only thing that I don't call, I'll reach out yeah. to Eric again tomorrow. Um, so in terms of a public hearing, I did chat with the superintendent about it. Um, and I think what we would more than likely do is if uh, we would use the gym is that we think that that would be the largest area that we have for social distancing, knowing that our public hearings and our deliberative sessions typically don't have more than, what do you think, 75 people. So 
by having it in the high school gym, I think that it would be more than conducive, um, you know, for the situation. Um, so that's kind of what I think we might want to plan on. Um, we also have, I don't, we may also have the ability to do it in a hybrid way where we can have a conference call. I, there's so many ways of doing it. So I think we just have to kind of play that out. Yeah. We'll sort I, it out. I just don't have the guidance yet from the town and, and from the, from the state on it. Yep. All right. Uh, this committee will be meeting next uh, on the first. Um, correct that. I believe first is a Tuesday. Yep. So we'll be meeting on the first uh, at 7 p.m. to start townside deliberations. Um, and I would also like to say that we also, we have a vacancy. We do not have uh, any applications last Catherine checked on that. So if you know anyone who would like to uh, be on the committee, I think now would be a good jumping on point where they wouldn't necessarily uh, have seen stuff on the school side, but they could review the town side and it'd be a good, uh, a good learning opportunity for someone to see if they want to be more uh, involved in the future. Uh, so with that, any questions uh, on the schedule upcoming and the plan would be to meet on Tuesdays uh, throughout December. All right, if there's nothing else, uh, I'll entertain a motion. Motion to adjourn. Second. All right, motion from Selectman LeMay, uh, second from Fred Plett. Any question or any discussion? All right, seeing none, I'll call the roll. Skyler? Yes. Bill Cordes? Yes. Greg Flegel? Yes. Joe? Yes. Eileen is not here. Jeff? Yes. Fred Platt? Reluctantly, yes, because I want to spend another hour with you all. <laughs> Dennis is not nice, here. Man. I vote. Nice. <laughs> Dennis <laughs> is not here. I vote yes. Spencer is not here. Richard Manso? Yes. Richard Fletcher. Yes. Jared Talbot. Yes. Selectman LeMay. Yes, sir. All right. Very unanimous. Uh, thank you all, and I will see you on the first. All right. Happy.